Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. When I was at Maker Central, AH Bespoke was giving away some tools for free. I asked if I could have this record number 5 and he very kindly said yes. I put a link to his channel down below so go check that out. It's really not in terrible condition but needs a little bit of love so I'm going to give it that. The first thing I'm going to do is just check how flat the sole is. So with a sharpie I'm going to put some marks on so I can see which bits are going to get removed. Then I've got this nice granite chopping board which I got from a supermarket which I use as a flat reference surface. Then I can get some 800 grit emery cloth on it. I'm just using some window cleaner as a lubricant and then I can pass the plane back and forth for about a minute. After that I can check how flat it is so you can see which bits have been removed and which haven't. So I get back at it probably for another 15 minutes of working my way and then I've got a pretty flat sole after that. The sides are pretty square but they've got a bit of rust on so while I've got this set up I'm just going to give them a quick clean up. With that done I can continue stripping the plane down. First getting the handle off front and back and then the frog can come off. It's important to do the flattening with the frog attached because that can affect the shape of the plain body and obviously the handles just give you something to hold on to. The rear handle is quite loose but I'm sure a few twists with a screwdriver would have sorted that out. The front one's got quite a few chips out of it and needs refinishing. They're both finished in a black paint so I think I'm not going to keep that. The painted inside of the body of the plane is a bit dirty but actually in pretty good condition. The cap iron has been chrome plated and unfortunately quite a lot of that has come off so I'm going to remove the rest of the loose bits with a wire wheel. I don't think I'm going to do any more to it than that. It's not going to look too nice but it doesn't affect the operation. While I'm at the wire wheel I give all the brass bits a little polish up. Here you can see all the big chips that have come out of the paint of this handle. So I drop a bolt that fits in snugly, then I can chuck it up in the drill press. I can now spin it in the drill and start with some aggressive sandpaper held round a sanding block. That's a sponge sanding block so it contours nicely to it. I start sanding the rear handle by hand, but this paints on pretty thick, so I swap to an old chisel and use it as a scraper. That seems to work a bit better, and when I've got most of the paint off, I swap back to a finer grit sandpaper to give it a final sand. I didn't like the black paint, and I'm not too worried about keeping this thing original. It's not an antique. I give both handles a coat of Danish oil, wait about six hours, and then give them a second coat. Time to look at the iron and the chip breaker. The chip breaker looks in quite good condition but the iron itself has a bit of surface rust. Before I do anything else I'm just going to take that back to the drill and the wire wheel and give it a quick clean up. Most of the rust gone, I quickly flatten the back of it and then I can get it into my angled guide and start sharpening. I start at 800 grit and work up to 4000. I just gave the body of the plane a wash and the frog and then I got some oil on to protect them. Before I get it screwed in place I'm just going to fit this brass wheel again. Then the two screws can go back in place and it can get screwed down. Getting it in the correct position was a little harder than I thought. This is because I hadn't noticed it earlier but the frog adjustment mechanism was missing and this would have helped hold it in the correct position while I got it tightened down. So next time I order something from a tool company, I will get one. You can just see at the back that screw hole should have an adjustment mechanism. The rods can be put in place for the rear handle and then the handle slid over it. It then gets a brass nut through the top and a little screw through the bottom of the handle.
the front gets the rod put in place, the handle slipped over it and then the brass nut again. The chip breaker gets this little screw put back on, then the blade can slip over it and I set the chip breaker about a mil off the edge of the blade. That can be all tightened down and it's time to get this back onto the plane. This screw that goes into the frog is pretty tarnished and I'm not sure if it's original so I might get a new one when I also order the adjustment mechanism. With that in place the blade and chip breaker can go on and then the old rather tatty cap iron can go in place. I slip it on and adjust the screw so it's loose on there and then I can pull the lever down tightening everything up. And that's it all done. I make a few small adjustments and then it's time to test out. It seems to take a really nice shaving and I didn't have a number 5 in my collection or as they're commonly known a jack plane. So I can see this one getting quite a bit of use. If you want more information about my collection of planes, click the link above or below to my second channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.